Good my people, welcome to part two of the interview with Nathan from Endangered Distilling Co. And the fact of the matter is, is that it involved a bit of technology um, called uh, this, which is what it recorded on. And the intro is a bit of a problem, but we're going to jump in about the second half begins around nine, mu nine minutes. Making the interview. Um, Nathan was a complete joy. I think we should all get behind the Endangered Distilling Co. Uh, it makes wonderful recycled stuff like this. This is a juice gin. It's made from basically leftover fruit and uh, vegetable juices that would be thrown away. Um, and they do a whole other vodkas and gins and that made from bakery leftovers because as Nathan says in the interview, bakeries don't sell daily day bread, they throw it away. And you've got all this massive ways that we can turn into happiness and turn into profit and not be you know, basically screwing up the planet. So, Let's jump into this part two of a fantastic interview um, and there'll be more to come because now that I figured out how to work the uh, record function on my phone when it comes to having conversations, we all know that this can just get better. I, mean, I did international relations and every last rebellion I've ever come across starts with often a platoon leader just turn around saying, I'm not following this order. <coughs> Yeah, um, yep. I'm not. I'm not going to shoot into this crowd. I'm not going to do this, and then changing his mind, and it starts with one guy going, "Nah, not doing this today. Um, I don't agree with this," and then it spreads, and all of a sudden, you know, entire regimes are in trouble because of one person. And I think that yeah, your idea is very much the same. Is that if one person plus one person plus one, one enough one people decide that they're going to do something different with their leftover bread for the weekend, then we can have a um, sustainable change. Yeah, that's, yes, <laughs> that's the idea. Okay, I wasn't able to locate where in Tasmania you are. We're based in Cambridge, so uh, five minutes from the airport. It's an industrial estate. Oh, you were uh, in Hobart, sorry. In Hobart, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I haven't been to Tasmania in... At my age, you turn around and go, I haven't been to Tasmania in, and that's because of a surprisingly long time. <laughs> be easily yep. 20 years since I was last there. Um, Changed a bit. Um, yeah, well, last time I was there, I was to do the Overland track before we really started having to pay for it. So, mm -hmm. um, And I keep on telling my wife and my kids that I'm going to go and take them into the Overland track. And well, it's been five years now, and we haven't set foot in Tasmania. <laughs> so, so life gets away. Because the reason why I ask is that there can't be that much bread waste or food waste in Hobart, can there? Uh, well, it just depends how hard you're looking for it. Um, bakeries tend to, they don't sell day old bread. You know, it's baked um, fresh that day. It's either sold or it's not. Um, with the cold pressed juice um, that we use to make the juice gin that you've got. Yeah. Um, it's made, uh, we take preservative-free, non-heat-treated cold-pressed juice. It's the reason why it tastes so good, but it also means that it's, it's perishable. Um, so it's really important um, that we, so we, we have access to that. Um, and yeah, we, we, we take it, we ferment it, turn it into a cider or a fruit wine, um, and then distill it. Um, pulling out the alcohol, but importantly also the flavour. <laughs> okay. Um, this is going to be quite short. Given the fact that I've only tried one of yours, your products courtesy of a friend of mine who, um, for some reason, best known to who um, likes me, um, where's the future from here? Are you going to start setting up branches on the mainland where, you know, if Hobart throws out enough, um to to have you sustainable and with the future you imagine what melbourne's going to do in terms of, of the same thing um so where to from here because you're only about six months old aren't you six months a year old no we've we've been around since we registered the business in 2016. okay we've we've been around for a while um our juice gin product is quite new um, that's our first foray away from vodka. So um, first release, 
was bread vodka, um, which again is made from surplus bread collected from bakeries and cafes around Greater Hobart. We haven't, we didn't invent um, that. That's not our own unique idea. There's other that have done it before. Um, there's documented evidence of the Russians doing it, um, you know, many, many, many years ago. So we're just trying to commercialise it. And as I said, use it as that conversation piece. If we can make a buck out of it, well then, happy days, right? Um, so where to from here? Um, I mean, the irony, and it's not lost on us, is that if we're successful in our goal of creating conversation, um, making people more aware and more conscious, is that there's the potential for the waste streams that we're currently accessing to dry up, uh, it means that our product to produce. Um, that just means we then get to turn our attention somewhere else. You know, try to find another. Um, all right. No, another, just had someone come through the front door. That's all. Try to find you know an, another avenue by which we can get some waste and, and turn it into a, a product. So we're only limited by imagination, really. Yes, and you're you're relatively young. You don't look much more than mid thirties. Thank you. That's really kind. <laughs> That's okay. My grey hair comes courtesy of my boys. Um, so, look, um, that's this is basically it. Um, I'm trying to not blind you with the glare off my glasses. Um, I will be tapping my chief financial officer to see if I can get a couple of your vodkas and stuff like that sent to me in the, um, by mid-year. So I can certainly do um, more of your reviews because this, people, my people, is a first-rate um, gin. Um, and I think that your idea is certainly one that d demands attention. And I think it's wonderful that your ultimate aim is to actually, for a sense, shoot yourself in the foot. You want this idea to become so widespread that you actually have to go and do something else because all the what was going to be end up being thrown away is going to be turned into something that people can more certainly enjoy. I certainly enjoyed that. I'm I'm glad. Yeah, like it's it's. I mean. One of the benefits of being a relatively small distillery is that you're nimble and you can, you know, uh, the word's so overused, but pivot, you know, like direct your attention elsewhere based on what's happening around you. And I think that's what's needed, um, you know, to, to deal with these kind of problems that we're facing. Basically. Um, glad to hear you enjoyed the gin. Right? Uh, so you're breaking up. How, uh, glad to hear you're enjoying the gin. How have you been breaking, uh, drinking it? Um, I've tried it neat. I haven't really tried it with any cocktails lately. Though, if you want to send me a message, a couple of your cocktail recipes, um, I certainly will be giving them a shot. Um, I'm off making um, a zombie tonight out of um, Jimmy Rum's uh, Navy Strength tonight. So with a with 57% um Rum inside me. I think I'll be pretty well zombie by nine o'clock. A gift outside works really well um, because of the. So when you say juice, everyone thinks you know. Oh, it's apple, it's orange, it's watermelon, it's raspberry, and 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 it does have those inherent kind of citrus-driven qualities, which work really well with you know, well, lime and sugar, mm -hmm. but um, also there's a lot of um, depend that. Each batch of flavors determined by the juice that goes into it, as opposed to the botanicals that we choose to lay over the, the neutral spirit that you were talking about earlier. So, um, this vegetable juices that we that make it into the mix as well. So, carrot, turmeric, beetroot, uh, yeah. um, and so there, there, there's definitely some savory kind of spice to it too. So, it really has this. I guess it's it's versatile, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say. For me, the, the simple usually the best, though, um, half soda, half tonic, and a wedge of orange. Excellent. Um, looks like I've got part of next week's cocktail sorted. <laughs> I, um, I, my ultimate game with this is to stop pulling weeds and mowing lawns and actually go and do this full time. 
So yeah. I'm off to do that. I've got to ring every um, dollar I can out of every bottle. And next year we will be hopefully walking the Camino Santiago in Spain. And I intend to um, go and have a chat to a couple of um, Spanish distillers whilst I'm in Spain and asking them how they do it because I've seen Spanish gin prices and um, we're going to make a lot more noise about our excise because the Spanish are paying, what, 20 euro, so $30 for a bottle of gin the size of of yours. And it's okay, so, okay, this is good gin. And they're paying a third the price that we are. So this, yep. is, this is where I want to end up. Um, in that case, look, I don't think this interview is going to set the world on fire, but it's a pleasure to meet you. Um, it's a pleasure to drink your product and it's a pleasure to go and spread your message. And just before I go, have you had a chat to the girls in Dunedin? I haven't, no, but I did look them, I did look them up. Thank you for, for passing that on. Um, it looks really interesting. Yeah. It looks really interesting. Um, my wife wants to go to um, New Zealand. <clears throat> She's a um, mad uh, <clears throat> L-O-T-R fiend and um, Hobbiton's apparently just outside um, Wellington. <clears throat> So I've been told to start generating funds so we can go to Hobbiton sometime before we piss off to Europe. Mate, I'd also like to go to New Zealand, but that's mainly just so I can drink fresh garage project. Okay. Don't know of them. Uh, brewery. Uh, Quite a own brewery from New Zealand. A lot, of, uh, a lot of hazy IPAs and beers with hops. If you're into that kind of thing, you should definitely look them up. Yeah, well, I do my best to drink beer, but um, I had salmonella 12 years ago, and that means that I'm a preserve of 220 fiend. Um, <clears throat> I just can't drink cheap shit, or otherwise I um, end up with migraines. And given the fact that I'm not buying this, the wife is, um, she determines the budget, and she would rather I drink spirits and wake up the next morning and be able to run the kids into the ground or drink beer and end up just <laughs> looking yeah. the worse for wear the next morning. But it has been yeah. a complete pleasure. People, my people, this has been Nathan from Endangered Distilling Co. Um, it's been a complete smasher. I'm going to go out and give you guys a rah-rah. I might see if I can have a chat to a couple of people in Melbourne and see if I can get you into their um, bottle shops. Thank you. Uh, that would be, that'd be great. We've got a, a new product coming out, actually uh later this month so we've done a collaboration with the Wilson society to raise awareness for the the swift parrot so um that's all i'll say for the time being but um yeah there'll be a, a new new bottle on the shelf soon don't be afraid to reach reach out nathan i'm happy to um help you help us and help everyone to just keep on drinking better stuff thanks so much appreciate your time been a complete pleasure catch ya. yeah